Hi guys, it's Tom from Something RS, and today I'm just purely going to be covering the future content that was discussed at RuneFest, whether it's guaranteed content or not. For anything else that happened at RuneFest, like the Q&A sessions or the Golden Gnome Awards, I'd suggest looking on RuneScape's official Twitch TV channel for their past broadcasts, and then you can watch those in full. This is going to be a really long video, so I realise you're not going to want to watch all of it, so what I've done is I've put a timeline in the description so that you can skip to the stuff that you're interested in and skip everything else. So first we're going to talk about skill reworks and first I want to discuss the construction rework. So the basic idea behind this was that they want to allow us to place any furniture anywhere and not just have fixed size rooms. So you could have different sized rooms with different bits of furniture in it and you don't have to have fixed locations for certain bits of furniture. So you could, if you wanted to, have a room full of trapdoors if you wanted. There will be different plots throughout the world, like there are currently different portals for houses at the moment throughout the world. There'll be different plots and these plots will have a limited number of houses on them. The number that Modmark gave was around 20, but this is all subject to change. But basically you'll see your house and a few of your friends' houses, and they'll be actually be in the game world rather than instanced through a portal as they currently are. They're also going to be changing up the training method, so you'll be building houses rather than just furniture. So for example, the example they gave was that you'd buy a plot, so you'd be able to build a house in that plot for an NPC to meet their needs, and then sell that house to the NPC. So you won't, won't just be building loads of oak dungeon doors all the time. Next up is the long-awaited and highly anticipated summoning rework. So they want summoning to be leveled up by using summoning rather than just making pouches. And so you'd gain XP by fighting and skilling with your familiars. And the other interesting idea that they brought up was that familiars would be able to be leveled up. So this would be able to give people more of a choice of what familiars you can take into combat and which ones would be effective, rather than just a Steel Titan being the go-to choice for everything. So all leveled up familiars might be as effective as each other, but each would still have their own special abilities and Steel Titan might still be very useful indeed. They didn't mention anything about how they changed the interface, but I imagine that they've got that in mind and they want to rework that as well. Next up is an agility rework at long last. They want to get rid of run energy, but they can't really do that at the minute as it's so integral to the game, I guess. And they still want people who have trained agility to have sort of a reward for their effort, because at the minute you have like increased uh, run energy regeneration. And run energy just helps you get around quicker, but maybe it could help your speed in more ways than just running. So some possible ideas that they gave, these aren't final, so maybe agility could help speed up training other skills, so you would make stuff in your inventory quicker, or maybe it could just provide faster or more useful teleports to you, or it could also provide cool things like sort of a cross between a dungeoneering resource dungeon and a shortcut is what they described it as where you would still need a certain agility level to access it and the the example they gave of this was that maybe you could climb on top of the grand exchange at level 99 and show everyone how awesome you are or you know something like that i think another one they gave was Maybe you could climb a tree and grab some gold or something, I don't know. But as I say, these are just ideas and these aren't final. And they also want to make the training a bit more varied, but they didn't really say how. Last up for the skill reworks is mining and smithing, as these kind of go hand in hand. They basically want to squash down the level requirements so that you can make rune armor at level 50, since you can use it at level 50. Well, 50 attack and 50 defense, that is. And they also want to add in new tiers of ores beyond level 50, so like beyond rune. The obvious idea for the level 60 tier would be dragon, but because of lore reasons you can't actually make dragon armor, but 
they mentioned the idea that you could use the dragonkin techniques and make dragon-like armor, so it'd be kind of like dragon, but not dragon, if that makes sense. And for the level 70 tier, which is the sort of Barrow's Armor tier, they mentioned the idea of digging, digging up a new resource called Necronium, which is from Third Age battlefields which haven't quite been cleaned up and there's still loads of debris and armor laying about. And then you could then use that Necronium to make level 70 gear. They mentioned the problem of smithing, which is that smithing's at the moment just sort of spews out a load of crappy items into the economy which makes them practically worthless and alk price basically. And they said to alleviate this a bit they want to sort of make you combine items to make better items which are more useful. So for example they said that you could sort of use two average run-of-the-mill iron swords to make a slightly better plus one iron sword and then you could combine two plus one swords to make a plus two sword and then keep going like that until you get a plus five sword which would then be a what they called a masterwork sword. They want to focus on the idea of producing less items that are of better quality rather than just shitting out a load of crap items. And they want to make sure that PVM drops from barrows and other places are still valuable. So what they've come up with is that you can combine a sort of plus five masterwork item and combine that with one of these PVM drops to make them into an even better item which would then be called an artifact item. Now don't panic but they said that they want to add deposit points to more mining spots so that you, ha you don't have to do drop mining all the time. But do, the reason I said don't panic is because they have considered the fact that this would require some rebalancing. So they've got it sussed, guys, don't worry. And they haven't totally worked out the details of how they're going to resort the level tiers for different elements, I guess. They still want to give high-level players some sort of advantage for being a high-level, rather than just access to higher-level tiers. But they didn't really mention what that could be. Next up is the 200th quest, which is apparently going to be focused around the mysterious area of Prithdinas. Now, those of you who are up to scratch with the law will know that that is a sort of elven city, which has been sort of hidden for a very long time. And there will be a Grand Master quest, which will be hugely epic and will give us access to this mysterious elven city. There will be world events based around Seren before this quest, and that will be sort of based around finding the scattered shards of Seren to put her back together, and you'll see some artwork of her on screen now. There may also be other low-level uh, sort of related quests before the release of this Grand Master quest, since the, at the moment the elves are sort of locked behind loads of other quests and high-level content and stuff. And on screen now is what they showed at RuneFest. Well, this is sort of the artwork, concept artwork for Prif Dinas. And they want Prif Dinas to be the new Varrock for high levels. And it'll be sort of the new hub. So if you're a high level, look forward to being in Prif Dinas next year at some point. Next up is quite an interesting development in the mobile and tablet sort of version of RuneScape. So last year they sort of announced that they were working on mobile versions of RuneScape and it's been sort of quiet on that topic since then. But now at RuneFest they have confirmed, well they've confirmed that there's no, there's no confirmed date for when the mobile version of RuneScape will actually come out as they're still actively working on it. And you'll see that they are actually making some progress as I'm showing on screen right now. And one other thing they have been working on is a RuneScape community app, which I will put on the screen right now. This will provide access to in-game chats, the Grand Exchange, news feed posts for updates and other stuff, forum access and clan management. It's intended to be accessible on all kinds of devices, so Android, iOS, or whatever else. This community app will just start out with 
the in-game chat only and the other features will be sort of slowly added and due to the recent poll uh, the grand exchange will probably be rolled out after the in-game chat feature as it was the most highly voted thing on that poll and the there's no confirmed release date for this community app either, but you can assume it'll come out next year at some point. And something else they mentioned on this topic was that they want to do one of three things with the mobile version of RuneScape that you would actually play on your phone. They either want to make it sort of small bits of RuneScape that you can play on your phone, like just having a play around ports app, as that's already quite sort of interface driven and would work quite well on a phone. Or they want to create something completely different but is still connected to RuneScape. And I think the example they gave of this was having sort of crafting mini games where you could put stuff together and that could give you XP in RuneScape. And the third idea they had was that they could create lore or story-based mobile games to develop character stories. And one of the ideas that they gave on this was that they mentioned developing the Managing Kingdoms minigame in Miscellanea. They sort of mentioned they could make that into sort of more of a grand strategy somehow. And it would basically just focus a bit more on story. Next up is the progress of the HTML5 client. Now, they said that it sort of hit its limits within the browsers, and they want to bring the HTML5 client out of the browser and develop sort of a native version of RuneScape, which would work like any other piece of software, rather than what we currently have, which is sort of a Java sandbox environment. And this native version would be a vast improvement over anything we have right now. And they said that this would supersede Java versions by early next year. But don't quote me on that. Now next up is probably one of the more exciting announcements, is the skill which will accompany divination. And they have named it the inventor skill. Now as I've said, this will be partnered alongside divination. So divination will gather resources for the inventor skill. And the inventor skill is said to be a support skill for other production skills. So it will sort of support crafting, smithing, fletching, and so on. And it's based around the idea that there's a technical revolution within the sixth age of RuneScape. And you can combine energies that you gather from divination with existing technologies. For example, dwarven engineering, elemental workshops, uh, goblin electricity and even clockwork devices that you can make in your player owned house. You can create new devices and these these will provide you with a new defense against the gods and even take them out yourself. You'll build contraptions which are kind of like divine locations in divination except you throw raw materials into these contraptions and other stuff comes out and these contraptions will sort of do their thing and then you can sort of do something else while the contraption is doing its thing and the contraptions can smith, craft and whatever else and odd things can also happen as is the nature of invention so sometimes you'll have the chance to make really beefy weapons out of lots of other weapons, which is on screen now. These are new level 92 handed weapons, and they are sort of a mix and match of other weapons, as you'll be able to tell. They said you'll be able to experiment with pyrotechnics, lightning conductors, explosives, and the analogy that they gave was that you could think of this as like a medieval alchemist who manipulates raw energies and experiments a lot. And while you're experimenting, you can earn rare plans or blueprints, I guess. And you can also earn what they're calling inspiration, which is a non-retradable resource. And you can spend this inspiration on making what they called items of wonder which are sort of experimental items. 
players lead the charge into the new technological age and some NPCs won't like you using the raw energies of Guthix. So that could have an effect on story in the game. And there will be large workshops so where you can sort of experiment with lots of people at the same time. And you can create new pocket slot items and other combat enhancements. They said that it's going to be a slow skill to train, but there will be viable elements for rich people who want to speed up the training process. And another very interesting aspect of the inventor skill is what they've dubbed the level up my X, where X can be various features of the game. So what this is, is items can basically be leveled up and will initially be applied to weapons, so you can level up weapons as you use them. And this will eventually apply to tools and familiars, so you'll be able to level them up as well. There is a new weapon associated with this skill, which is said to be integral to the skill. I'm not exactly sure how, because they didn't say. But this is a sword which is fueled by eating souls and it has a very sort of dark personality and it'll, it'll talk to you and stuff. And it, the sword will also assign you to kill stuff, kind of like how Slayer works, but they said it'll be a lot darker than Slayer. Modmark then gave some random ideas to us to give us an insight as to what we can do with this skill. So he said to imagine a lightning sword or a clockwork shield Items that get better because you use them in a certain way and get better at fighting certain monsters. So, for example, you could have a sword that's better at killing basilisks. And I'm not entirely sure what he meant by this, but he said items can develop a relationship with each other. And the example given was a sword and a shield could become more effective together as you use them together. Each item that is invented is also unique to you, as each item has your name on it. And when you sell the items that you create, they'll still have your name on it. So I could give you a sword that says made by something RS, so that you could say, I've got a sword made by that really cool guy, something RS. Next up is World Event 2, World Event 1 being the Battle of Lumbridge, and World Event 2 is Armadil vs Bandos. The premise of this being that you create two big towers, one for Armadil, one for Bandos, and you'll use these to sort of destroy the other team, and whichever god loses this battle will die permanently. So if Armadil dies in this battle, he will die forever. If Bandos dies, he will die forever and be gone forever. This event will also include optional PvP elements. Another very brief mention is Marimbo vs Brassica Prime. Brassica Prime is of course the patron god of cabbages, who is himself a very large cabbage. This <laughs> Marimbo vs Brassica Prime will be a new minigame, which is said to have an, a permanent effect on the game world, although the premise of which has not actually been said, so we don't know what this minigame is or what rewards will be included. Next up, rejoice, as minigames are getting revamps, and which minigames get revamps will be decided by the players in various polls which are yet to come. Minigames will also be getting a new matchmaking system, and this matchmaking system will be accessed from the interface anywhere in the game world, and you'll be able to select which minigames you want to play, who you want to play with, and you can also do other things while you wait for a minigame to pop up, so there's no XP waste, don't worry. When a match is found for a minigame, you can simply click a button and you'll be taken to the minigame. A few other content revamps that were mentioned include the Giant Mole, which is going to be remade into a sort of My First Boss style boss, which is meant to introduce newer players into PVM, teach them base mechanics, and it will also bring new rewards to the Giant Mole. And they also mentioned the Basilisk boss from Smoking Kills, and other various creatures will get reworks and players will have a say in what gets a rework. 
Those of you that play old school RuneScape will be pleased to know that this will be getting content updates as well. Some of the features mentioned were player designed bosses including the Kraken, white dragons will be added along with white dragon hide armor to sort of fill in the gaps in crafting. They'll be able to raise monsters up from bones so that you don't necessarily have to wait for respawns in busy monster hunting areas. And new quests will be added exploring the backstory of certain NPCs including the Sandwich Lady. Next up is Player Owned Ports version 2. This is basically just a huge addition to the Player Owned Ports minigame. This will include two new zones which are the Loop and Shield Islands. There'll be three new adventurers, each with their own skill. So there'll be a cook, an architect for construction, and a hunter. And these will each bring their own rewards and stories. There'll also be two new trade goods, two new resources, 12 new crew members, new ship parts, 62 new voyages, and new level 85 throne weapons, capes, and rings. Next up on the list, Zaros is back in the new master level quest called Fate of the Gods. This new quest will bring new unlocks as rewards, including new slayer monsters, new divination locations and new unlocks for divination. The premise of this quest is basically that Zaros wants you to bring him back to Gilanor and needs you to find him a body to take over. And the choices you make will have an effect on what Zaros ends up looking like. So whether you support him or are against him will change the look of Zaros. So if you support him, he'll look really cool. And if you hate Zaros, then he'll look really stupid. You'll also get to find out about the origin of Zaros and explore a new environment called Freneske and learn about other things, including the Elder Gods. Next up is a potential new PvP minigame based on the Hunger Games called Valley of the Dead. So you'll get to explore a new environment with PvP targets scattered all over and you'll have to use your skills to build equipment and get food and the last man standing wins. The environment changes every time you enter the game and this idea will be put onto beta servers for people to test and make it better. Next up is a potential new boss for skillers. This is aimed at people with 90 plus skills and it's a non-combat boss and there will be skilling based rewards and it will be both co-op and solo. Not many other details to give on this I'm afraid. Next up is a potential new quest called the Rite of Passage which explores how Armadil became a god even if he dies against Bandos in the world event to come and it will show his Rite of Passage and the history of the Aviancies. So this image right here shows the sort of process of going through each of the challenges that Armadil had to face and this image here shows what the environment might look like. Next up is another rather brief one about competition and aspiration for high level players. So the ideas that Jagex are coming up with to keep high levels playing is well recently you may have heard about the prestige system which the players did not like and other ideas that they've come up with are seasonal high scores for skills, regional high scores for skills so it would show who's the best player in England, who's the best in America and so on or something else entirely which could be suggested by players and so you should get on the forums and suggest stuff. And finally just a random wacky idea called the Church of You. Since you're the greatest hero in RuneScape and you've done so much stuff, you're the world guardian and so on, people will do things for you and literally worship you in the church shown here. Content would change every week and different people would come to your church asking for different pieces of help and you could choose whether you can help them or you can boot them out of your church if you liked. You could build relationships with NPCs, NPCs could build relationships with each other in your church and since it would be your church 
you would get the benefits of owning it and being a celebrity with all kinds of weird rewards. This is just a random idea, it's not set in stone, so don't worry if you think it's a terrible idea. And that should cover most of the future content discussed and revealed at RuneFest this year. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let me know in the comments what you're most excited about, and I'll see you in the next video.